Hey guys, it's Laura and it's time for my February book haul. So this month I actually bought quite a bit less than I did last month, which is very, very good. I'm hoping, like really hoping to take a few months off buying books. I mean, there's a couple of books next month that are like very highly anticipated releases. So I definitely will be picking those up like Chain of Iron. And I think there is something else coming out next month and I can't remember what it, what it is but I, I'm gonna buy them, but I'm gonna read them in that same month. So other than that, I want this to be the last book haul for at, at least a couple months, <laughs> you know, because I really need to get to reading the books on my shelf. So we've got 10 books to talk about today. Um, some of these I just kind of bought really impulsively, and then some of them um, I took a trip to Barnes and Noble with my husband and bought some books there. So let's get into the book haul. The first book I have here is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. One of the authors that I wanted to read more from this year was Matt Haig. I read um, How to Stop Time by him and absolutely loved it and know that I definitely want to read more by him. But this was kind of impulsive in that I heard someone talking about it. I've heard so many people talk about this on booktube, but I forget who it was. It might have been Emily from Books with Emily Fox. Um, and she was talking about it and how good it was and I was like, okay, that's it. I'm just gonna buy it. So I ordered it and here we go. Um, this is a very interesting concept. It says, between life and death, there is a library. So we're following this woman who I believe has decided to end her life. In between life and death, she shows up, she ends up at this library where she can relive her life and see where her life would have gone if she had made different decisions. This just sounds like something I'm really gonna enjoy. Not only that, but I know that it has a lot to do with mental health. I know that it's going to be very emotional and I'm gonna cry. So really looking forward to that and really glad that I have this book now. I absolutely adore this cover as well. And I'm excited to check it out and read more from Matt Haig. The next book was a complete cover buy. Okay, I admit it. I didn't know much about this book before I bought it, but I saw the cover and I had to have it. And that is Ava Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abbey. Um, this is a middle grade and it is following Eva Evergreen, who is a witch. Um, she's determined to earn the rank of novice witch before her 13th birthday. If she doesn't, she'll lose her magic forever. The only problem, Eva only has a pinch of magic. So this sounds like it's just gonna be really cute and really fun and middle grade March is a thing happening next month. So I wanna participate by at least reading one middle grade. I actually don't have a lot of middle grade that is unread on my shelves, but I have this one and I'm really excited to read it next month. This was definitely impulsive. So um, I don't remember what video it was, but someone commented, have you read the Gollum and the Ginny. I think you would really like it. And I was like, no, I haven't, but I'll put it on my list. And instead of putting it on my list, I just bought it <laughs> because why not? But it follows our main character, Shava, who is a Gollum, a creature made of clay brought to life by a strange man who dabbled in dark Kabbalistic magic. Ahmed is a Ginny, a being of fire, born in the ancient Syrian desert, trapped in an old copper flask by a Bedouin wizard centuries ago. He is released accidentally by a tinsmith in a lower Manhattan shop. This takes place in 1899 in New York City. The Gollum and the Ginny try to fit in with their immigrant neighbors while masking their true selves. I think that this is gonna be really fun. I'm not the biggest fan of historical settings, like we know this. And I keep saying that, but honestly, I keep reading historical fiction and really enjoying it. So can I really say that anymore? Probably not, but I love anything set in New York. This has a touch of magic to it. The next book I have is a February release that I was highly anticipating, and that is City of Villains by Estelle Lore. This is the new book in a new series by Disney that follows Disney villains and it's more of like this dark gritty setting for Disney and I think that this is really exciting what they're doing. Um, but we're following Mary Elizabeth Hart who is a high school student. She is interning at the Monarch City Police Department and she gets wrapped up in this case 
of a missing person, a missing girl, who is actually the daughter of one of the most powerful men. And she ends up discovering that one missing person is only the beginning of a larger, more sinister mystery as the truth circles closer to home. And Mary finds herself caught in the fight between those who once had magic and those who will do anything to bring it back, even if it means creating a few monsters. So yeah, this looks like it's gonna be so much fun. I did not realize how short this was, <laughs> um, but it's it's very short. I think it's only like 230 pages. Yeah, those are acknowledgements. It's 229 pages. So I'm hoping to actually knock this out pretty soon. I love Disney. I love Disney villains. I still have all of those Disney twisted tales on my shelf that I need to read, but I think I'm definitely going to be starting with this one because I am just so excited about it. Next, I have Legendborn by Tracy Dion. So everyone has been talking about this book. Everyone has absolutely been loving it. It is a YA fantasy that is based or not based on but it uses like the myth of king arthur as the basis for its magic system and there's like secret societies and fighting demons and powers and it just sounds so so up my alley a lot of people have been comparing it to like um the shadow hunter books as well because it's an urban fantasy with a black curl main character and i'm just I'm really excited to pick this one up because I have not heard one bad thing about it. So I finally picked it up and I'm hoping to read this very, very soon. I don't know when, but soon. <laughs> so now we're on to the five books that I picked up at Barnes & Noble earlier this month. I went in with um, an agenda. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to pick up the House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I really wanted the hardcover, but apparently the hardcover is impossible to find. They only have paperback, which is fine. Absolutely everyone has been talking about it, reading it, and loving it. Another book that I have not heard one negative review about. Um, everyone just says like it's a big warm hug in a book, and I'm super excited to get to it. We're following a man who works for the Department of Magical Youth inspecting like these orphanages that are full of magical children and he gets the assignment to one day go to this special orphanage that houses magical children that are dangerous that could potentially bring about the end of the world. There's a male-male romance and it just sounds like everything I want and need in my life. So I picked up a copy and it was actually um, a buy one get one 50% off book. So I went in search of another buy one get one 50% off so I could, you know, buy one get one 50% off. And I found this book, which I think is actually like their book of the month or something, but this is A Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Perry. Didn't hear about this book, had no idea it was coming out, but H.G. Perry actually wrote The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep, which was actually the last book that I finished in 2020, and I absolutely loved it. It's about a main character who can bring fictional characters out of books into the real world. Oh my god, I love that book so much. And so when I saw this book by him, I knew I had to pick it up. It's quite a chunker and I think that this is also historical as well but we're following kind of a magical revolution. People who use magic, magicians are fighting for freedom. A lot of different countries and institutions are deciding whether to legalize magic. It just sounds like it's going to be so so interesting and because I loved the other book that I read by this author before. I definitely think I'm gonna enjoy this one, so I had to pick it up. Um, I, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but I'm super excited about it. Also, this is the first book in a new series. I don't know if it's a duology. I think the second book is like already out or is coming out soon, I'm not sure. But yeah, really excited for this one and can't wait to get to it. Then I picked up Ring Shout by P.J. L.A. Clark. P.J. L.A. Clark is another one of those authors on the list that I wanted to read more from this year. So we're getting a head start on that with Ring Shout. This is a horror novella by him and it follows a monster hunter who is hunting down actual monsters disguised as KKK members. It sounds like it's gonna be so, so good. I've heard so many good things about it. So I cannot wait to pick this one up. While talking in the comments about dragon books, um, I think it was my last book haul, because I had mentioned how difficult it is to find dragons in fantasy when it should not be. <laughs> and they were saying, yeah, like I 
want dragons in fantasy but I, I can't find them. From that moment I decided to make it my mission to seek out all the books with dragons that I could find and hopefully one day come out with a very nice comprehensive recommendation video for you featuring dragons. So <laughs> I picked up Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. This is a book about dragons. Um, it follows the Blaze Wrath Games which is like this dragon racing world cup i think and that sounds pretty good to me we're following our main character lana who longs to represent her native puerto rico in their first ever world cup appearance i i can't wait to read this because dragons <laughs> okay and then the final book that i have in this book haul is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, another book that I've heard nothing but amazing things about. Everyone was reading this last year and absolutely loving it. So I knew I had to pick up a copy when I saw it. This is about a girl named Liz, I believe, who is um, has her future kind of planned out. She is set to go, she has the college that she wants to go to, however she needs the scholarship in order to get there. And I think her scholarship falls through. And then she realizes that this, her school is very obsessed with prom and like the prom queen gets a scholarship. So she decides to run for prom queen and then ends up falling in love with one of her competitors. It just sounds like it's gonna be really cute. And it's another book that I've heard no one say anything negative about. So I'm hoping to really, really love it. I am really excited to get to it whenever I am in the mood for another YA contemporary. So those are the 10 books that I bought this month. Do let me know down in the comments below if you have any thoughts or opinions on the books that I showed you today. Let me know which one you think I need to get to ASAP, which ones you loved the most if you've read them, or which ones you're really excited to get to. But that is going to be it from me today. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.